Chris Slater, and I wrote the general theory of Gravicon solution. And Grava stands for gravitation, Consolution stands for consciousness evolution. Con and this word here is the parallel force to gravitation. And what this stems from is a general theory that began in 1989 with an inspiration. The inspiration was this, um, that the universe is composed of equal amounts of two forms of substance. In the third dimension is mass. In the fifth dimension is consciousness. Now what do I mean by consciousness? What I mean is another word people use is spirit. And uh, there's been a lot of talk of this. I have an experiment I'm going to explain that I think could uh, help prove the existence of consciousness and help get us past this sort of point where we are, where we know there was a big bang, but we know the four forces of mass, gravitation, electromagnetism, strong atomic and weak atomic forces couldn't have caused the big bang. So uh, logically there must be more to the universe. And so what I started thinking about was this idea of consciousness. And probably the best proof of that is from people who have had brain surgery in which their brain was frozen yet they have memories from the surgery uh, where they remember what the surgeons were talking about and they could relate it later. Well, with a flat EKG, there's no way that the brain could remember anything. It's on standstill. It's not dead, but it's on hold. It's not working right now during that surgery. And uh, so what this led me to believe is that there's a second form of consciousness there that leads to the idea of the spirit. Okay, now don't, don't let me lose you there because uh, this theory is very simple and and when you think well wait a minute now this explains what caused the Big Bang and explains the design of the universe how could it be so simple well Albert Einstein who worked on a theory of all said that um, he didn't figure it out but someday when you do hear the correct theory it'll be a sense of awe because it'll be like oh it's all that it's that simple because he said out of simplicity arises complexity and you will see that um, <clears throat> in this theory, in numerous examples. Okay, let's go back to taking a look at this. <clears throat> now, Albert Einstein wrote an equation, which is E equals mc squared. Energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. And what it does is it explains the relationship between the energy and mass using the speed of light squared as a constant. And what he talked about there was he talked about that the energy in uh, mass is at rest. Most mass is uh, very stable. Uranium-235 happens to be the most unstable and then they can use that to make atomic bombs. But like, for example, if you were to take a spoon and you were to take the mass of that multiplied by the speed of light squared, the mass, of course, being the collection of atoms in it. And uh, there would be a tremendous amount of energy in that. If you were to detonate that spoon, you would explode several blocks. Okay? So, but the idea is that it's energy at rest. Okay. Let's suppose we have an equation for this side of the universe here. Now, keep in mind that these are equal amounts of substance in the universe. This is in the third, this is in the fifth, the fourth dimension in between here is time. Simply time which links these two dimensions over time from the beginning of the Big Bang, just after the Big Bang, right back to the Big Bang. Something that links them together. So let's suppose we have an equation for this side. And what would that equation be? Well, what does consciousness have? Consciousness has thoughts. So you could say that energy is to mass as thoughts are to consciousness. And we're going to use CO to denote consciousness. And uh, again, we're going to use the same constant, the speed of light squared. And, um, and so we have thoughts equal consciousness times the speed of light squared. And it goes, we go back to that idea of energy at rest. In this case, we have thought at rest. Now we can use those thoughts. We have consciousness. Every life form on earth, whether it's a blade of grass, Consciousness in a blade of grass or consciousness in a human has thoughts. 
Now they, you may say, well, a blade of grass has a thought. It's it's a very small wavelength of thought, you know. Uh, and human beings, of course, have these jagged wavelengths of thought because we can think very quickly. Our brain is uh, three times larger than a chimpanzee and moves and uh, is able to operate ten times faster. But nonetheless, it's the same idea. And what we have, let's say we were to take my consciousness and multiply by the speed of light squared. It would equal a certain release of thought energy. Let's suppose that there was a big rock here and I was to release that thought energy into that rock and that rock would get really hot and melt or whatever it would do. But then my consciousness would be reduced to zero. I'd have to start all over again. In lowest forms, single-celled organisms work my way back up to the human level. And